the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So Wednesday in Holy Week, uh, we have the third Gospel reading. We've heard Matthew on Palm Sunday, uh, Mark's Passion account uh, yesterday, and now the account of St. Luke uh, today on Wednesday. And St. John's uh, account of the Passion will be read on Good Friday, uh, the most sublime of the Gospels. Uh, and it, it is important to read each of the four accounts and to pay careful attention uh, for in, in that way we get a full picture of our Lord's Passion is that there are uh, kind of the standard accounts of the Passion that, of course, all four Gospels have, uh, but there are special differences uh, in, in each uh, that are, are important. Um, a Matthew, we could say, is the most, I don't know, comprehensive or the kind of the, the standard version, uh, Matthew being the first Gospel written. Uh, Mark is a summary of Matthew, uh, but has some extra details. Uh, Mark, of course, being um, a disciple of St. Peter himself in Rome writing for a Roman audience. And so there, there are some extra details, um, such as explanations of uh, Jewish terms, particular Hebrew words and phrases that Matthew doesn't explain, but in the Gospel of St. Mark, there are great explanations are given as to what these uh, various words mean or what cu the customs of the Jews were, which would have been unfamiliar to Roman audience. Uh, also, in Mark, there's a special detail that um, uh, in, the, in the other Gospels, uh, Christ tells Peter that before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Uh, but in Mark, it specifically mentions, before the cro cock crows twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. So there's some little details that, of course, Peter would have been paying very close attention to himself. Um, um, and then Luke also, uh, and, and that's from today's reading, uh, particularly interesting is that Luke was a companion of St. Paul in his journeys and was a physician. And so St. Luke has very um, detailed, uh, we could say, um, he, he's very interested in medical uh, or, or things related to health. A lot of miracles are given particular attention in the Gospel of Luke, as well as he uses some particular terms which would have been proper to uh, physicians. Uh, for example, in, in today's Gospel reading, it is the only one that mentions that our Lord would uh, sweat uh, drops of blood. Uh, in, in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, is agony in the garden. Very interesting to a physician. Also, um, the cutting off of the servant's ear, uh, St. Luke is the one who mentions that our Lord heals uh, that servant after he'd been wounded. Um, also of interest is uh, that St. Luke is, is the only one who mentions the women of Jerusalem who follow Jesus lamenting him. And our Lord turns to them and says, Weep not for me, but for your children. For behold, the days will come where they say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that have not borne, and the breasts that have not given suck. They shall begin to say in the mountains, Fall on us, and so on. Uh, so St. Luke is very interested in, of course, uh, 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 pregnancy, uh, lactation, those things that a physician would have been very familiar with. Uh, St. Luke, Luke is the one that gives us uh, these particular details. So this is all part of God's plan, is to have different men from different backgrounds, uh, so as that they're each perspective gives uh, a fuller account, the account that God uh, wanted the, uh, us to have uh, for, the, for the rest of time. And if we could, we could pause there, perhaps, on that idea of the women of, of Jerusalem following Jesus and, and really returning to our theme uh, uh, of Mary Magdalene and of love, um, of, of Christ, just looking at the evidence, just looking in the Gospels, reading the accounts of the Gospels, uh, we would have to say that um, aside from Christ our Lord, uh, the women are the heroes of, in our Lord's passion. Uh, this is just something that, uh, just read the passion accounts, and it's the women who are there. It's the women who are defending our Lord, uh, succoring our Lord, uh, whereas it is the men who are either betraying him, failing him, running away, abandoning him, and so on. It's only the women who follow him, who weep for him, who are at the foot of the cross, or, or St. John the, the Apostle, because he went to the Blessed Virgin, and she brought him there. Uh, so there's a, there's a tremendous lesson there for, for us in, uh, uh, in, in the fact that it, it, it is the women, it is the feminine um, nature which accompanies Christ's masculine nature to the cross and remains there with him.
Now, if we recall, uh, going back to even before the account of our Lord's Passion, uh, we have Mary Magdalene uh, weeping, wiping the feet of Jesus, anointing him with oil, his feet, his head, uh, un uncaring of the, uh, the ridicule she may receive, uh, the suspicion, the accusations, the whatever it may be. She simply loves Christ. And, and we see that throughout um, the Gospels, and especially the Passion account, is, is the courage that women are possessed of because of their love. Uh, St. Peter and the apostles, very courageous men. Recall St. Peter was willing to die with Christ. He, was, he drew his sword and was ready to charge 60 temple guards. And yet when that was proven not to be the way, uh, his courage failed him. Uh, two also. Um, in, in, in the story of, of the raising of Lazarus from the dead in, in John chapter 11, it is the apostle Thomas who urges the, the, the other apostles when they say, Lord, just now they were trying to kill you. Will you go again? And Thomas says, let us go that we may also die with him. So that the apostles were filled with courage. Uh, but it is, um, you know, there are differences in men and women. There's a masculine courage and a feminine courage. Uh, and the masculine courage is, I mean, it's bold, it's audacious, it um, uh, is not, not, doesn't shirk from danger, it uh, seeks glory. There's even a kind of a, um, oh, I don't want to say a, a bloodlust, but just kind of a, um, uh, an affection, a thirst for action uh, that, that, that is present. Uh, but this kind of courage fails. As we see, all the apostles left. St. Peter himself left. He was, he was still willing because of St. Peter's great love. He was willing to go and be in the courtyard, but still he denied Christ. Um, but we don't see any of that from the women. We don't see any of the women failing to be there, uh, showing any kind of fear. All that the women display is love for Christ and is their love, right? It's not a, it's not a thirst for action. It's not an audacious uh, a courage. But it's the love that motivates them to an unstoppable courage. Uh, uh, um, it's, it's fearless. Uh, they're following Christ on the way of the cross. They're at the foot of the cross. They go to the tomb uh, where there'd be 16 Roman guards. That, that was the Roman guards when, when they, they put that, that um, in place over Christ's tomb. The women went there. They had 16 rough guards. What are they going to do? It's dark. It's early in the morning. Right? Who knows? Uh, they don't care. Right? They, they want to be near Christ because all they have is love. Uh, and, and that is the source of all the virtues, of courage, of fortitude, of bravery, whatever it may be. It's the love of the women for Christ that gives them that courage. And that is true courage. That, that is what um, all of us are, are called to have for Christ, is, is not the natural courage, the audacious courage, uh, the, 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 the bold, fearless, conquering courage. Uh, but simply that courage that is a result of, I don't care what else happens, I want to be with Christ. And so we, we see that at the crucifixion of Christ. The women present are uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, Mary Magdalene, and Mary of uh, Cleopas. Uh, these, these are the women who were there. And as I mentioned, St. John uh, went to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, and now he was included because uh, of all the apostles, his love was the most pure. His love for Christ was the, was the purest, and and so he is there uh, almost as uh, really really the the exception uh, uh, to the rule that the, the men all failed Christ. There is Saint John uh, because he went to the Blessed Virgin, and his love was most uh, I, dare I say uh, the, his love was the most feminine, and that it was the purest, in that it was not there was not an audacity. He was the young, youngest of the apostles. Uh, in 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 art, he's pictured as the only one without a beard. Uh, because of his youth, uh, but also because of his purity. And it's the, not the purity of just chastity, but the purity of heart. Um, uh, St. Peter, we could say, was afflicted with um, lust in the broad sense. The apostles all were. A lust for, for power or for um, action or for adventure or for that uh, zeal, even for God, for the return to the glory days of the Maccabees and King Solomon. Uh, but it wasn't pure. It wasn't just a pure love for Christ. And... Um, uh, in fact, St. John, from, from tradition, has been the one who first uh, knew of our Lord's sacred heart. Uh, he, he had knowledge of that when he laid his head on the breast of our Savior at the Last Supper, uh, St. John the Beloved. Uh, and his gospel is the most, uh, as, as I mentioned, sublime and pure of all the gospels. Uh, so he was included because he was beloved. He was perfectly pure and chaste uh, in, in body and in soul. 
And that will be a lesson for any of us in that if we want to draw near to Christ, uh, purity is an absolutely essential uh, virtue. It's one of the foundational virtues. Um, there, there are worse vices uh, th- than impurity, but if we, if we want that true, um, close, intimate relationship with our Lord, uh, nothing impure can, can draw close to God. That, that is an indispensable uh, quality, an indispensable virtue. Uh, so we have Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary of Cleopas, Mary Magdalene, uh, the women of Jerusalem weeping over Jesus. And let us not forget uh, Veronica, St. Veronica, um, whom we know from tradition, uh, wiped our Lord's face with her veil. And she, too, was just possessed of outrageous courage springing from love, uh, running up to Christ, per- perhaps uh, you know, ignoring the soldiers, pushing past them to get right up next to Christ uh, and wiping his face with her veil. And, and who knows what happened after that? She was probably kicked, thrown roughly aside. Um, who knows if, 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 she, if, for all she knew, a soldier could have, have struck her with a spear or something. Uh, but, but she was heedless of that because she loved Christ. Uh, and there is still one more, one more woman in the gospel account uh, to whom uh, we, we, would, we must recognize. And that is um, not even a Jew, not even one of Christ's companions, but a Gentile. Uh, that is the wife of Pilate. She sends to him and says, have nothing to do with that just man. I have suffered greatly in a dream uh, because of him. Uh, So even she, right, even she, uh, um, we could say, was a hero in in this account in encouraging her husband to do the right thing. Do not condemn an innocent man to death. And the fact that that she had that dream, that she was gifted by God to to have that understanding of of Christ's identity uh, is indicative that that she, she was a... I mean, as far as she she could be a pious woman, uh, you know, virtuous, um, wanting to to do the right thing, and so on. And so we see all these examples uh, of of women who uh, were more courageous than the men because of their love, their great love, um, and that would just show us the um, how the evil of the feminist movement today, which is all about turning women into men, which is which is uh, um, seeking to make women give them positions of power and seeking to um, satisfy the the lusts of women in terms of we want to be equal to men, we want to have this and have that, and we should have power and we've been wronged and so on. Uh, That is not the feminine nature. The feminine nature is meant to love, uh, and that is what gives it it, uh, its audacity and its power. And and we would have to mention, too, the evil, the grave evils of, 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 of abortion and so on, uh, is just destroying women at their very core, which is to to bear and to love children, and and so that that's all is just something that we can uh, understand from j- even just a simple reading of the gospel, given an insight in the nature of men and women. Um, but of the men, um, and we could say uh, as again Saint John was the most pure, and so he was included in that group there at the foot of the cross. Uh, but other men uh, of note in in the gospel, uh, perhaps. Um, uh, we could say we're not there by choice, but constrained. Uh, the first of those being Simon of Cyrene, who was constrained to follow behind Jesus and carry his cross, uh, a great honor, uh, which is why it's mentioned that he, uh, the, um, he's the father of Alexander and Rufus. Uh, these would have been um, men in the Christian community, the early Catholic community there in Jerusalem. Uh, it would have been a great honor for them, and so their names are mentioned in 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 showing that they are um, you know, have an illustrious uh, background and heritage because of their father. Even though he did it unwillingly, uh, he still, I mean, think about it, the only one to carry the cross of Christ besides Christ himself. So you must think that Simon of Serene must have been a very righteous uh, man indeed to have been given that honor. Uh, the two other men um, in, in, in a uh, passion account, or at least, at least two others, uh, the good thief on the cross, uh, giving um, recognition to Christ where it was due, repenting, uh, displaying that that virtue, and also the centurion, who, upon witnessing all these things that took place at Christ's death, the the earthquake and the and the um, uh, eclipse, says truly, uh, this man was the son of God, and so giving glory to God uh, simply by fact of the matter. This is what I've seen, and I have to testify, this is God's son. Uh, and finally, in in the, in the Passion account, uh, we would have Joseph of Arimathea, uh, who petitions Pilate to have the body of Christ removed. Uh, he wasn't there during the Passion, but he, we could say he is the, the caretaker uh, coming in afterwards. And, and here we, we must pause and note 
the uh, there are no accidents in scripture, no, no, not one detail. So this man by the name of Joseph, um, keeping the body of Christ, uh, taking it down from the cross, laying in a tomb, sealing it up, uh, being the custodian and guardian uh, of, of Christ's body, even as was jo- St. Joseph, a Christ's father, uh, the guardian of the body of Christ, uh, keeping it, uh, um, uh, guarding it, uh, given that mission by God. And then we must go all the way back to the Old Testament, and we have Joseph, uh, the patriarch, uh, into Egypt. And what was Joseph, what, what did he do? He was placed by the Pharaoh in charge of gathering bread to feed the world. Uh, and so it was St. Joseph, who was guardian of the grain, and nobody could go in, nobody could go out, nobody could take, remove any of that grain uh, um, during the seven years of famine. The entire world uh, was saved from starvation by the guardianship of Joseph in the Old Testament, uh, keeping the bread of life for the world. So we see there, there are no accidents there in, in these names in Scripture. And we, we must mention Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah. His readings are, are the lessons for these, these few days from the prophet Jeremiah. He was called uh, the fifth evangelist uh, by the uh, fathers of the church uh, due to it, just the uh, accuracy of his prophecies, just the, the undeniable, uh, almost perfect uh, accounts that Jeremiah gives of in his suffering servant uh, chapters. Uh, chapters 50 to 55 or so in, in the, the prophet of Jeremiah. Um, and so I'd like to close by reading from that, reading from today's lesson, uh, the words of the prophet Jeremiah and how so perfectly uh, it matches with, with Christ during his passion, during his crucifixion, uh, which excited uh, the sorrow of those women, which moved them to such compassion that they were heedless of danger and displayed uh, greater courage uh, than any of the men, uh, what was their love for Christ and their, their knowledge, their, their compassion for his sufferings. And so we have from Isaiah, There is no beauty in him nor comeliness, and we have seen him, and there was no sightliness that we should be desirous of him. Despised in the most abject of men, a man of sorrows acquainted with infirmity, his look was, as it were, hidden and despised, whereon we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our infirmities and carried our sorrows. And we have thought him as it were a leper and as one struck by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our iniquities. He was bruised for our sins. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his bruises we are healed. Like sheep we have all gone astray. Every one hath turned aside into his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was offered because it was his own will, and he opened not his mouth. He shall be led as a sheep to the slaughter, and shall be dumb as a lamb before the shearer, and he shall not open his mouth. He is cut off from the land of the living, for the wickedness of my people I have stricken him. He hath done no iniquity, neither was there deceit in his mouth, and the Lord was pleased to bruise him in infirmity. Now we see a reversal. If he shall lay down his life for sin, he shall see a long-lived seed, and the will of the Lord shall be prosperous in his hand. Because his soul has labored, he shall see and be filled. By his knowledge shall, shall this my just servant justify many, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I distribute to him very many, and he shall divide the spoils of the strong, because he hath delivered his soul unto death, and was reputed with the wicked, and he has borne the sins of many, and has prayed for the transgressors. God bless you all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.